Hello and welcome to Apples of Gold, based on Proverbs 25 11, words fitly spoken. Have you ever had questions you've wondered about, things your mama never told you? Well, here are three friends with some insight, practical advice for everyday living. Hello, hello, and welcome tonight. Shiny from Maryland, Binu from Texas. Thank you, my friends, for joining in. Do you want to say a quick hello? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, girls. We are in three different time zones. If you are watching us for the first time, and it should be your first time, this is the first session. We hope it won't be the last session. If you are a regular podcast listener, please bear with us. Let your love cover a multitude of perhaps technical difficulties. We'll see how tonight goes. If you are listening in, we have a little session and the group is called Apples of Gold. And this really started about a year ago, I would say. And it was prompted by two people two people one of them is online right now which is binu but the first was my mom my mom and, and girls i think both of you you know have have moms who did it all when we grew up right they were immigrant moms and they were amazing and so last year my mom was saying sophie you need to have classes for younger girls because they seem to be clueless and i'm like mom i don't have time for that and i'm no expert in that area but then I saw a video girls that you guys did. Now, for those of you who know Binu, you know that she doesn't come to the forefront very often, but I saw a video of you both doing a cooking session. Do you remember the one I'm talking about, Shiny and Binu? My more curry. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. And I loved it because Binu had actually quoted um, a scripture from Titus. Could you just quote that really quick for us, Binu? Uh, Titus 2.5, um, yeah. older women teaching younger women. Yeah. That's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. And so for those of you who may not know the three of us, we go way back. So we met 1990 in Florida, and we were kids then. And I never thought that I would be an older woman, but we have joined a certain club, the 50s club now, <laughs> And uh, I kind of like it, girls, because I feel like I can sh freely share my opinion with people and not be apologetic about it. <laughs> We've earned the right. <laughs> We've earned it. We've earned it. No. Um, one of the reasons for these sessions is because as a young person, I didn't have a lot of mentors in my life. I have an amazing mom who is such a server. I've learned many things just watching her, but I didn't have older women in the church or in the workplace who kind of would guide me or who I could go to with questions. Let me ask you girls, in your lives, starting maybe with Binu, have you had women figures in your life that you could go and ask anything to? Sophie, I've had my mom, of course, and she's amazing, just like your mom. Um, and I've had my sisters, my sister, and then my peer group. Shiny being, of course, one of them. Yeah, but that's it. I didn't have anybody older. Sure. And what about you, Shiny? I'd have to say my answer is just similar to Binu's. Uh, again, my mom worked hard. I could never um, do all the things she did. She also was an immigrant mom who came to this country and just her focus was just working hard and providing for her family and her children, not to really give advice and, and you know, the, the way to live life. She just did life and you learn from that. It wasn't really words spoken so that I could understand it. It was things done. Absolutely. And when you said, uh, they didn't really teach in terms of do it this way, this way, that way, in terms of words aptly spoken. That brings me to the title, the, the, the name of our little group, this threesome. That sounds kind of bad, but could you tell us just a little bit why we're called Apples of Gold? Okay, um, when Sophie first reached out to us, it was through email. Yeah. And I remember thinking, um, I don't check my email often. There has to be a better platform. But because 
Sophie's in Canada. Um, WhatsApp was easy. So WhatsApp, of course, makes you um, name the group. So the first thing I actually thought of when I think of Sophie and Shiny is Proverbs 25, 11, And it says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and settings of silver. So in other words, always having the right word at the right time. And that was Sophie and Shiny. And um, I meant for it to be a group chat, but um, I guess it's become whatever this is. Absolutely. And Shiny, you love the name. You love that verse specifically, don't you? Yes, I do. When I first um, read it years and years and years ago, um, I, I just loved how that sounded, you know, like, oh, apples of gold and settings of silvers. Uh, to be honest, that sounds a little gaudy, but uh, what it means, a word aptly spoken is a beautiful word, is a timely word. And so I often would, whenever someone gave me an apt word, I, I would always tell them that's, you know, that that's like your words are like apples of gold and settings of silvers. So I always used it for other people. I never thought of myself in that uh, category, but so it's funny that I'm here, <laughs> but. Uh... No, it's all, it, it's all divine appointment. I do believe that. So thank you girls. And why don't we get right into it? So tonight's session is we're kind of calling it heart and home. And it's two very, very different questions. And so for those who are listening, I just want to say that these are questions and scenarios that I think all three of us have faced at some point. People have asked us these questions. There's no names that are going to be mentioned or anything like that. So if you're like, oh my gosh, is Sophie talking about me? Maybe, but most likely not. Um, these are scenarios that we've come across. So our first question, girls, is this. There are a couple of men in my life, one at work and one at church, who speak to me at length. I think they may be interested in me more than a friendship level. While they haven't asked me out yet, I feel like it's heading in that direction. And I don't want to be rude, but I have no attraction to them whatsoever. And oftentimes I try to escape whenever they speak to me. How should I handle this? And before I hand it over to Shiny, I just want to say how not to handle it. I remember my first experience where I knew that a guy liked me and I was in school and I was very, very shy at the time. And this guy was a friend and I knew he was interested because he would sit very, very close. And then he'd like try to sneak his arm around me. And because I was so shy, I would like look repulsed. Like, have you ever, like, I wouldn't say I was repulsed, but my body language, like, ew, no, that's so gross. And I would avoid him as much as I could until there was a point where I think his affection turned to disdain for me. Like, he hated me. And from that experience, I've been very mindful in my life how I handle people's hearts you know when people are interested so that's uh and by the way when i when i read this question i'm not talking about me this is a question that was posed okay about a couple men in my life so shiny could you speak a little bit to that okay sure um well um i'd like to share about two experiences uh in regards to this topic um one was a time where uh, a guy let me know that he was not interested and another was a time where I had to let someone know that I was not interested. So I'll speak on the first. Well, it was a, a, a guy friend that was a part of my, you know, uh, circle of friends and, of course, started taking an interest in him. And so I guess eventually he uh, caught on that I'm interested. And uh, so, you know, um, he clearly was not interested. And um what happened was, I guess one day he just asked me, hey, would you like to just go for coffee? Um, and I kind of knew it was coming because he he's he really didn't show any interest. In, but, you know, a girl can only hope and dream. Right. So, you know, um, and how it happened was and he was he was very polite and, and very kind about it, uh, which I think was very important, you know, for my heart to be able to to handle what was coming my way. Um, and it's probably why I really liked him a lot because he was just such a kind-hearted person but um, he asked the question you know uh, and he just 
got straight to the question. He didn't sit there to say, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, uh, he just kind of cut to the chase and was like, do you see that there is more than a friendship with us or that there's a future with us? And, um, you know, of course, I'm kind of embarrassed and sitting on my hands and I'm not a hand sitter. OK, I like to use my hands. So just sitting on my hands, kind of rocking back and forth. And, uh, you know, I think I said something like I would like to hope so, uh, you know. And so he said, well, you know, I, I don't see anything. But he also said some nice qualities about me. And we just talked over coffee and, you know, it ended fairly well, you know, in the sense that, you know, I understand, yes, a few tears were shed, but that's okay. You know, I didn't like break down in boo-hoo in the restaurant, make a scene. And so um, just a word of advice to anyone who is being, um, I don't want to use the word rejected. Um, let's use the word redirected. Okay. Redirected. Uh, I like that. I like you know, that. Let's use the word not, yeah. You yeah. know, or, you know, as I was gently let down, there's an Adele song, right? That goes, you know, if you're going to let me down, let me down gently. Okay. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it was gently, I was gently let down and that's okay. Um, I held my head up high. And also another thing I made sure, because we were a part of the same friend group that I didn't make it awkward or weird, you know, I didn't suddenly ignore the person, didn't stop talking to the person. I carried on because yes, my, um, he also gave me the freedom to kind of let go of that, sever that and move on. Cause the next day I was like, you know, Hey, I'm single, you single, just kidding. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, uh, again, redirected, right. Uh, that, that, that's this, these thoughts, these uh, things that, you know, you're hoping for needs to come to an end because the guy made it very clear. So it helped me to just move on. And the second scenario was um, through a proposal. <laughs> okay. Mm. Being Indian, you're going to meet a lot of different people, you know, sure. and um, met a, a, a great guy, very sweet, very kind, but I knew he wasn't for me. And um, we had talked a few times. He came from out of town to meet me. And um, at the end of the day, he was like, I know you're the one I want to marry you. And I was like, wait, hold up. We just met. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I said, we should really pray about this. I knew I, I knew yeah. there was no interest at all. And um, I knew I didn't need to pray long about this, you know, so uh, very shortly after we had talked and he had left, I called immediately, you know, because it's like, why prolong this, you know, because you're dreading, uh, you know, saying this to someone, but you know, uh, and then the proposal situation, hey, you, you know, the whole purpose is for marriage and you know, you need to like cut it off. So um, I just called the person, let him know, thank you so much coming down and meeting me. I really enjoyed meeting you. You were, and I said a few things that I truly meant about that person, but I said, I uh, earnestly prayed about this and um, uh, you, you're not the one for me, but I know that there's a great girl out there for you. And so just kind of just thank you so much for your time. God bless you. And I ended that call. So um, the key thing to this whole thing is really kindness and just a politeness in if you're going to talk to someone and um, also don't lead them on. You know, after you've done that, no need to go hug them. Are you OK? And, you know, call them, text them, making sure they're OK. They're going to be fine because they are redirected. Absolutely. Such great point shiny in both of your scenarios my gosh i'm sure your hubby's very happy that he's got you today oh i'm happy i got him too <laughs> oh. thank thank you for that binu what about you um first of all shiny that was great advice <laughs> um that was so good well when i first heard the question my um, initial response was of course you have to be honest you have to tell them right away. Um, but then I actually talked to my husband about it. And he said, you know, you have to be careful how honest you are. Okay. Um, not everything needs to be said. Not, not every word has to be said. Like you, you don't have to say everything that's on your heart is what I'm trying to say. Um, he said, because some guys may actually take that as a challenge and want to pursue more, you know, um, that's some guys, some personality types. And then I actually asked 
my sons, age 21 and 19, yeah. um, one of them said that he would um, want the girl to be honest, but kind of uh, to, to maybe say something like, hey, I just want to make sure we're both on the same page and there, there's nothing going on with us, something like that, just, just kind of out there. Um, my other son actually said that he would rather her just drop obvious hints instead of just being so direct, mm. just, you know, drop hints about being in the friend zone. Um, I think that's what they call it now, or um, to actually involve a mutual friend. Um, he thought that would be good too. So I, I did give them options. And one of them was for the girl to say directly. Okay. And they were both like, ah, not too directly. It, it has to be, you know, a little bit I, of fluff. And you know what, this is, I think this is more complicated than we think sometimes, because you just mentioned a couple, like of your, both your sons are a little bit different in that. Yes. And something you touched on something, Benu, I wanted to really quickly, not quickly, it's a whole session in itself. But when I was in India, girls, I had the chance to speak at length to one of my younger relatives, handsome young guy in his 20s. And he said, what has been kind of a movement or trend, at least in India that he's seeing amongst the young people, is that no doesn't necessarily mean no and that men will take that as a challenge and oftentimes girls may say no with the expectation that they want you to pursue them so all of these mixed signals to me like when i go back to the word of god i think that our yes has to be yes and our no has to be no and playing these games can get people into trouble you know um and i hear what you guys are saying like i mean wanting to be firm but wanting to be kind and and dropping hints like i mean i geez my hints might not be your hints yeah so yeah and especially because i got three different answers i yeah. don't think that there is a right answer i yeah. think um like we all know you take it to the lord ask the holy spirit to direct you um mm -hmm. depending upon the situation that is okay. Shiny, were you going to say something about that? No, I, I fully agree. You know, definitely take it to the Lord in prayer. Come on, sing it, girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Girls, any closing thoughts on this? Because I got, this is like a whole session on itself. We could go on and on about this question. But I think what I'm hearing is be kind. That's like, I mean, I think we need to be authentic with people. And I loved what Shiny said before don't lead people on either whether that's verbally or in our body language we can sometimes inadvertently do that and um sometimes calling upon a friend i can't remember ben if it was you who had meant to calling upon a friend to give us maybe some objective advice is 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 a good thing would you say that benu yes definitely yes so uh in terms of am i Am I too friendly with this guy, Binu? Uh, and, and for you to say, no, Sophie, you're just like that with everybody, or actually, no, you are being yeah. too friendly with them. So, and I think as friends, we need to be really honest with with our advice. So, That's thank true. you, girls. So, any f closing thoughts before I move on to a very different question? I would also say that if um, someone is having a hard time taking that you know, redirection, um, that if you are the one letting someone know that you're not interested, if you know a common friend, if you know someone, just kind of let them know to check up on them. Because again, I don't think it should be that person checking up and making sure they're okay. Just kind of, you know, um, talking to another person that could kind of make sure that they're okay. As if they didn't get well. Because sometimes, you know, it's it's not, easy advice, e easy thing to hear. Yeah. Honey, that's so good. I agree. Yeah. And both of you girls had such interesting perspectives and tips. I think that's very helpful. So thank you, girls. All right. Are you ready for the next question here? Sure. All right. So our second question is this. My husband, not mine, okay, per <laughs> se, my husband loves to bring unexpected guests by with little to no notice he is an extrovert and i am an introvert who is nervous when it comes to cooking i get into a panic about the house being a mess 
And on top of that, what in the world am I going to make for a crowd? Ah, so girls, what do you have to say about that? And both of you, by the way, uh, for anyone who's listening, if you don't know Shiny and Binu, they are amazing cooks and their reputation precedes them. And I think they've had a lot of experience because you both have boys, you've got kids, you know. So whether, you know, it's a ministry, whether it's school, whatever it is, people unexpectedly coming. And, and what would you say to this to this question? And shall we start with you, Shiny? Sure. Um, yes, you, what you just said about the unexpected guest, my husband loves to do that, wow. you know, and it, it has happened since uh, the beginning of our marriage, you know. Um, we are both I want to say extroverts in the sense, uh, you know, we both love people, we both love company, we both love get togethers. And so it was an easy thing to do. However, being newly married and um, not really knowing all the cooking skills, like, you know, my mom knew everything, but I didn't pick up anything, you know, <laughs> I learned on the way, uh, along the way in marriage. Um, but it was kind of hard. And, uh, nerve wracking, uh, felt like my house had to be perfect. Uh, you know, you don't want anyone to see your mess. Right. And again, you have to prepare everything nicely like a meal. I mean, I struggled with even just planned dinners. Okay. Because, oh my gosh, stressed out. Uh, but fortunately for me, and I know not everybody has this, I have an amazing chef in my home. My husband is quite the chef wow. and so he's a way far better cook than i and he he was like we got this i didn't believe him at first but we did he <laughs> would just get in and take over and just okay i'll chop this you know and we would do it together um eventually you know it would it would become more often people would come over we'd have get togethers here and there and so it got better it, i want to say it took a good 10 years but wow. one of the things that i had to finally let go of was allowing people to help me in my kitchen <laughs> Okay. okay. I'm like it wincing. Was, I'm wincing right now as you're saying that, Shiny. I hear you. I winced too because in my eyes, okay, if someone comes into my home, uh, you know, I want them to be my guest. I don't want them to lift a finger. I want to break out my china. I want to like treat them with royalty, you know, when someone enters your home. That's the feeling I have. And so to make someone, you know, get things and put things out, I was like, oh, no, 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 no one can lift a finger. But my husband was like, allow people to help you. It's okay, you know. And actually, he would actually say, hey, you can come over here. You do the, like, ah, 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 you know, <laughs> as, as, as there's like people revolving in my kitchen and yes. I, you know freaking out like crazy but then i eventually got used to it and it's funny because i'll be doing something and someone will be washing my dishes and i'm like yeah go ahead the soap's right there <laughs> you know, what am i doing this yeah. is you know i know there might be many women out there thinking you're crazy i would never you know but it was so freeing because uh especially if it's last minute is just to be able to get a few people together and it's fun and you're having conversations you're flipping chapatis so someone's doing this it's chaotic mm -hmm. but you know what just chill it's going to be good it's fun everyone's coming together what can take two hours and you being feeling frustrated uh will just happen in less than an hour with everybody chipping in and helping and you know so my advice is let people help you Gosh, oh, I have the greatest respect for you. Let me tell you, Binu, would you say that you've had to do the same in your house? Letting um, people I've in? done the same. Yes, yes, I've definitely done the same. And it's fun. It makes them feel at home as well. Right. Um, another thing I was going to add was if your husband is the extrovert and you're the introvert, maybe you could have a conversation with your husband and just say, hey, you know, I know you love people and that's that's wonderful. Is there any way that these wonderful people can come over at a non meal time, like maybe three or four to where, you know, it, it eases the, the stress and just have to offer snacks, have some snacks around coffee, tea, something like that, just to have that conversation if it's possible. Now, um, if, if it is impossible at that time to have those people over at three or four, they're only available at, you know, lunchtime and dinner time. Then um, the fact that it is impromptu 
Well, it is actually a good thing because once again, it eases the pressure off of you versus a planned meal. Sure. So that's nice. So all you have to do is just take out what's in your fridge, you know, offer that, offer them a simple sandwich, whatever that may be. You know, just something really light and simple is really all you have to do because it's impromptu. And then, you know, I think about it and the people that come to my house, no one is is necessarily lacking for food, right? They're coming over because they want fellowship and I want fellowship as well. So it's it's all about keeping that in perspective too and just understanding. And one verse actually that it came to mind was Proverbs 15, 17. It says, better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. So it isn't about what you're having. It's about the fellowship. It's about the love. So keep it simple. Oh, that is so beautiful. I love that verse. And girls, both of you have really challenged me because I had a, a very small women's brunch on the weekend. And my cousin, who is so precious, she's so helpful, I won't let her in the kitchen. And so I've been you I've been known in my church to use my rear end to move people out because I have a substantial butt. And so I'll be like, get away, get away from the dishes. Let me take care of you. And she was in my house. And she's like, if I'm truly your sister, you're going to let me help you. But I haven't gotten there yet. I'm like, it's so hard. But girls, you've challenged me really today. And I'm going to try and release that a little bit more. And uh, for me, um, I, I love it because my husband, um, we're, I would say we're extrovert introverts. We recharge privately. And so Sam is very respectful in terms of, if we're going to have someone over, he tries to give me as much notice as possible. But I love what you girls said, that sometimes the impromptu ones are less stressful, you know, than the 10 course meal that we're planning. Mm -hmm. And for me, what has worked, especially in ministry, is, is because I shop at Costco for our church, we always have snacks at the church. I try to buy extra and I, 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 I stack my or stock my freezer in my garage so that if people pop in I've got little appetizers I can just stick in the oven and I think that preparation you know can relieve some stress for us if we're a little stocked well but um any other thoughts girls on that and uh, by the way I loved what you said about that having communication with your spouse especially if you're kind of different in terms of socially speaking and uh, if you guys, you know, are, are loving, respectful of one another, you want to be able to be to concede some things. Right. And to work together. Yeah. 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 So, so what is it that stops you from, you know, recruiting that help? Is it that you just like things done a certain way oh. or, or you like people to just relax? Oh, good Binu. question. Binu. Binu. <laughs> Gosh. Sorry, okay. that was that, that is a great, great question. And um, you hit one point. I would say it's kind of three things. Um, one is that I honestly, I love to take care of people. While girls, I think both of you like to cook. Cooking makes me nervous, but I like to take care of people. So I cook because I love people. And I, when people come into my house, I want them to do nothing. I want to wait on them. That comes from like a sincere thing in my heart. But also... If you see my house from the outside, it looks big, but when you come in, my kitchen area is very, very narrow, and I feel claustrophobic if I have more than two people in there. And so when Shiny was saying, you've got to get past, it can be a little chaotic, I have to be able to get past it because I'm a very orderly, I think I'm an orderly person, and to just let things go, is I think that's a little bit hard. And I do, I like things done. A certain way I'll you know I'll tell you like I don't know if your mother-in-laws have ever stayed with you I have the sweetest mother-in-law mother-in-law and she would many years would come and stay with us for a couple months and I had to let things go like she's an amazing cook but she does things differently than me and the first week I'd always be so agitated but then I'm like okay I gotta let it go it's okay it's all right you know and so girls I think from both of you what I'm hearing is being able to release things right yeah oh all right girls well those are our questions for tonight and session to session they're going to be very very different there could be some very light-hearted questions and some that are maybe a little bit more heavy but thank you for sharing a little bit of your thoughts or insight and I hope that whoever is listening tonight 
has gotten a little bit from it. And if anyone watching has a specific question or you've got a question for the future that maybe we can tackle, please feel free to send us a private message. In the meantime, I'm going to ask Shiny, do you want to, if you could just close in prayer, that would be great. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we praise your precious holy name. Thank you, Lord, for this golden opportunity that you have put in the heart of our dear friend Sophie, which eventually transcended into our hearts as well, Father God. Three friends, three sisters in Christ who just want to give glory to your name, Father God. Lord, although we are physically distant from the Northwest to the South, to the East Coast, Father God, we come together, Lord Jesus, on this platform to give you glory through the words we have spoken today, Father God. May our words, Father God, be apt. May it be fitly spoken, Father God, and may it be timely advice for our listeners. Lord, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, girls, for the first Thank session. You. It was fun chatting with you, Binu and Shiny. And I look forward to tomorrow. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you for listening in. We hope you were blessed and that you received a fitly spoken word in the right season. We pray that you would live out your life as abundantly as the Lord has purposed and designed.